and make mention unto me unto Pharaoh, for I was brought out of a house. For indeed I was stolen away out of the land of the Hebrews, and, and also I have done nothing, and they put me into this dungeon. Uh, and so it, the, the, there was a simple, simple dream. Now, because you knew what the man's job was, you can figure that one out real quick. But God didn't turn around. He could have, God just could have had a voice beaming from heaven saying, okay, three days, you get your job back. But God gives it in picture form. And the truth of it is, when all, when all the, the other uh, magicians and all came to interpret, they couldn't figure out what it was. But when I look at dreams, I think it's dead easy. You can't help but miss it. You can figure it out. But anyway, and the Bible said then, so, uh, so he said, remember me when you get up there. When, when the chief baker, now this is the next boy, when he saw the interpretation was good, he said to Joseph, I also had a dream, and behold, there's three white baskets on my head, and in the uppermost basket was the manner of, of baked meats for the pharaoh, and the birds that eat out of the baskets upon my head. And Joseph answered and said, the interpretation was, them three baskets, they're three days. Within three days, Pharaoh will lift up, lift up your head from off you, and you shall hang on the trees, and the birds shall eat your flesh from off thee. And it came to pass on the third day, it was Pharaoh's birthday, and he said, he made a feast unto his other servants, and he lifted up the chief butler and the chief baker amongst the servants. He restored the chief butler under the butlership again, and he gave the cup back into his hand, just as he said. And the Bible says, then anybody hanged the chief butler as Joseph was, was, uh, uh, has interpreted. I can see Joseph looking out the window and shouted, told you. Everybody shout, told you. <laughs> I've never had to interpret a dream where God was saying you're not going to make it to the end of the week, you know, but, but uh, maybe there will be a time I'll get to do that. I don't know. But I know they forgot about Joseph and left to been there for two years. But it was the interpretation of the dream. If you were to read the story, he had other people come in, tried to interpret, couldn't, couldn't. Because interpretation of dreams is given over to those that has are children of the Most High God. Look at somebody say, that's me. <laughs> Who the Spirit of God dwells within. If you have the Spirit of God inside you, God will give you wisdom once you learn the art and learn how to do it. You say, but hold on a minute, Joe. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I, I've never seen Jesus anywhere in the Bible interpreting the dreams. Good point. But then I never saw Jesus passing out a track. And I, and, I, and I never saw Jesus having altar calls either. But we don't shoot them in the foot. You know, I want to tell you, we're dealing with biblical principles. If it's in there, we do it. Are you with me? So interpretation of dreams is very valid, very necessary. And I believe God's going to instill it again. Jesus spoke in parables. Jesus didn't speak in plain speak. He didn't talk in ordinary language. When he would go to say anything, he would tell them a story. And the story, you'd have to be kind of smart to figure the thing out. And, and the disciples one day, in Matthew 13 and verse 10, the disciples came to him and said, they said to him, Jesus, why do you speak in parables? Why, 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 why do you not speak plainly to us? And he said, and he answered and said to him, and said, here's the reason. Because it's given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but unto them it's not given. He said, I'm giving it to you as children of the Most High God. That's why it's in codes and symbols. And the Spirit of God can teach you how to interpret where the world doesn't know what to do. If they've got their, 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 their seances and they got their fortune tellers and have not got a clue. They're demonic inspired. The children of the Most High God, when God speaks to you for a dream, don't run to some clown and ask them. Don't just run all over the place. Seek the Spirit of God and say, show me and find somebody that you know can do it. But God says, I've given it to you so that you can uncover the mysteries of the kingdom of God. God is trying to talk to you through parables and through night parables. He's trying to do it. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 2 and verse 14, natural man receives, a man that's unsaved receives nothing of the Spirit of God. For they things are foolish to him. Neither can they know them because they're not spiritually discerned. You've got to be spiritually sweet on. But if you are, you can interpret the dreams. Any dream or revelation can only be interpreted by the born-again believers. Nebuchadnezzar and Pharaoh, uh, leaders in their own nations, in their own history, uh, have both had dreams. And there again, they called all the magicians and the warlocks and all in to interpret the dreams because evidently they'd done this before and none of them could do it. Only two men, one was Joseph and the other was Daniel, at different times was brought in to interpret those dreams. I want to tell you something, that you have the ability to interpret God-given dreams this morning once you learn how to do it. In fact, Acts chapter 2, verse 7, he said, It will come to pass in the last days, saith God, 
that I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. Visions and, and visions and dreams is just about the same. If you can interpret a dream, you can interpret a vision. Uh, your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. And on my servants and on my handmaids, I will pour out of my spirit in them this, and they shall prophesy. In other words, they'll move in the more prophetically and more spiritually minded. And that's the generation and the times we're living in. So God said, in the end times, it will be part of God's strategy to use dreams more and more and more in the interpretation of dreams so the enemy doesn't know, know what to do. God will keep you, he'll keep you right, he'll advance you. We have lost the art of that, but I really believe God is about to instill it again. God guides people. He guides us uh, through visions and dreams. I get all types of people calling me, asking me all types of questions, and, and especially when you come to the business folk and they're maybe about to put 1.7 million pounds or 1 point million euro into, into investing, and they'll say, is this of God? I mean, you, I believe you me, you don't turn around and say, oh yes, oh no, just up a, when somebody's about to put 1.7 million into something, I, 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 you just plain don't do it. It's all right if, if you want to play games they got and somebody's just talking about should, should I buy a red dress or a blue one. I just feel the Lord saying buy the blue one. <laughs> but if somebody's asking you about 1.7 million euro or 1.7 million pounds, you're not going to mess with it, believe you me. But they want to know. And God is certainly telling them. I've always asked them the same question. Have you had any dreams in the last two weeks? Nine times out of ten, they will say, yes, I have. I'll say, tell me your dreams. Tell me your dreams. And on what they have dreamt, I can tell them right there and then, if God says go, or God says wrap it up in a waste paper basket and get rid of it, just solely on dreams. That's why you need to be born again if you want to be successful in the kingdom. God spoke, he always has, in, Gen in Matthew chapter 1 and verse 20, uh, concerning the, the, whenever uh, Joseph and Mary's story, uh, uh, and they were not married at this time, and then she said that she was pregnant with the Holy Ghost. The Bible says, uh, when Joseph, Mary told Joseph, Joseph thought on these things, and behold, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream, in a dream, and, 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 and said, Joseph, son of David, fear not to take thee Mary to wife, for she is, what she has conceived is of the Holy Ghost. So there's a man who needed to know, is this the woman I'm supposed to marry? Uh, alternatively, is this the man? Is this the man of my dream? Is this the one? Because he may look good and, 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 and smell good and say all the right things, but oh, you, you only know after you get married what you really got. Anybody know what I'm talking about right there? And, and uh, uh, it's better God tells you ahead of time. God tell you ahead of time and you would know whether to get rid of them or whether to go ahead of it. And God spoke to Joseph in a dream, in a dream. Uh, the Bible says in, in Matthew chapter 2 and verse 12, we're dealing with Joseph again, and God, w uh, being warned of God in a dream that they should not return to her, that they departed into another country that went down to Egypt. He said, God said, in a dream, arise and take the young child of the mother and flee into Egypt, for there they'll bring you word again, for Herod will seek to, kill, to destroy the child. And we say, if he didn't know that, he would have been still sitting there when the soldiers came in to butcher the children and Jesus would have been uh, slaughtered like everybody else. But he got it in a dream. He got it in a dream. Look at somebody say, I need to dream a dream. That's right. I need to dream. I need to know, do it, do this. I need to know, do it, do that. I want wakened. Everybody shout, wakened me, Lord. I need to know. And he warned him in a dream. And then Matthew chapter 2 and verse 19. And when Herod was dead, now Joseph and Mary's out of town. They took Jesus. They're living in Egypt. Nobody wants to live in Egypt if you're, a, if you're a Jew. And they're living down in Egypt. But when Herod was dead, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream. Everybody shout, in a dream. In a dream to Joseph in Egypt and said, Arise now, take the child and his mother and go into the land of Israel, for they are dead that sought the young child's life. So God just said, It's okay to come back now, it's safe. I would like to know that at time. Is it safe to go there? Is it safe not to go down there? Because it, it, if it's going to be a motor accident, so I don't want to be in and that, let me know. I need to know. Everybody shout, I need to know too. Matthew chapter 27 and verse 19. And when he had sat down on the judgment seat, he was about to judge Jesus. 
this, this, this king, and he says, and when he sat down on the judgment scene, his wife said unto him, saying, have nothing to do with this just man, for I have suffered many things this day in a dream because of him. Suffered many things this day in a dream because of him. That's what you call a nightmare. His wife had a nightmare before the trial of Jesus Christ and actually said to the man who was going to judge him, don't do it. Put somebody, I'll get away from this thing now. He wouldn't listen, of course. Dreams can warn us. Dreams can let us know. Laura doesn't, I dream a lot. I dream a lot. I think it's fabulous because God can talk to me. Now, not all dreams, not all dreams are good. Some of them is because you eat too much pizza and cheese. And, but, the, but there's those ones and you learn which is God and which is not. But he has told me. He has told me. And, and Laura doesn't dream a lot. She used to say to me, I don't dream at all. And I used to think, no, you do. You just don't remember. Then we prayed and said, God, let her remember. And she doesn't dream a lot. But if she dreams, we sit up and take notice. Because her dreams, it usually warns us of people, of things, of things to come, of what's about to happen. And, and, and she'll have dreams. She'll say, I had a dream last night. And we'll put her knife and fork down and say, all right, all right, tell us, because we know it's never going to be good. And, and, and Laura will tell us. So she, she, gets, she gets the dreams. It's the warnings. And, and, then, and then sometimes, sometimes we don't know all the details. We don't know where it's coming from. But when you know there's something, you can prepare yourself for it. Amen. You can prepare your heart. So when it hits, it's not a devastation to you. It doesn't take you by surprise anymore because you know something's happening. Many times now he gives it to her with pinpoint accuracy and then we know who and we know where and we know when it's coming. So you need to be switched on. And I see this is for everybody. This is not just for leaders. In fact, most leaders I know doesn't bother with this. But nevertheless, you can. The Apostle Paul and Peter both were guided, were guided by dreams. Their whole ministry was guided by dreams. Uh, and and then let me give you two examples in, in a more latter-day deal. A man called Elias Ho, H-O-W-E. Would you, how would you pronounce it? Howie, Huey, Ho. H-O-W-E. Well, he's dead now, so we don't have to worry about it. Uh, H-O-W-E, this man, Elijah. He's the man that invented the sewing machine. The sewing, he invented the sewing machine. And he would tell you, he said, I saw it in a dream. He was a Christian. And he saw a full working sewing machine before a sewing machine was ever invented. He saw it, he drew the pattern, and he made it and became the man who was the inventor of the sewing machine. Another guy called Niels Bo Boer. He, he is a Danish uh, physicist, and he's the man that made the first breakthroughs concerning the atomic uh, the atom, the breaking of the atom, the atomic structure, and the quantum theory. Now, that's way beyond me. Way beyond me. You understand it. Here's my, he's it all figured out already. He's, he's sitting there, I know that stuff. I know that stuff. But he got the Nobel Prize in physics in 1922, and in his opening statement, he said, I got the breakthrough because I saw it in a dream. I saw it in a dream. You're one dream away from a fortune. You're one dream away from the love of your life. Wow! You're just one dream away. God can tell you where to go, what to do, how to do it in a dream, in a dream. God is speaking to you through dreams. You just need turned on to it. Now, there's several things you need to know about writing because people phone me. Uh, I, the, the other one I got from America was yesterday. Uh, the person was so desperate to know they didn't, they usually write it out and email it or whatever. This one just spoke it over the phone until an, the answering machine. And I had to sit down with the phone and, and take, it was a three minute long call. Uh, and and uh, uh, interpretation doesn't take three minutes. I'm trying to fast forward it to get to the juicy bit. And what you always have to remember is if you've had dreams, write them down. As soon as you wake, if you feel it's a God dream, write it down. If you don't, by the time dinner time comes, you'll have forgot. Believe you me, you will have, the enemy will come in and steal it right out of your heart. Write it down. I always keep paper and notebook somewhere convenient to me in my, in my bedroom and my studies and all the rest of it. And when God gives you a dream, write it down as much as you can remember of it, okay? You don't need all the nitty-gritty details all you'll find out. Uh, and, then, and then the best way, first of all, you go crazy is just ask God. It's just, are you talking to me? Is there something you want to say? So remain quiet before the Lord and listen for impressions. He'll impress you. Write down what you think it's going to be and, and, and then say, God, is this right? And, and you be, he'll begin to teach you things. All right, now listen, here's the best way. Break the dream down. 
Break the dream down into a very simple form. Look for recurring things and look for certain symbols that I'll teach you about. Look for certain. I, I, I taught this before. I told you there's only 12 types of dreams. There only is 12. If you can remember them, if you know what they are, the minute somebody, and they fit, all dreams fit into one of those 12. Now, the minute they start to talk, the first thing you're looking for, okay, where's that? Where's this? Where is this? And the minute they mention something, you know it fits in there. It fits into, into that box right there. In fact, I have cut that back even. You don't even need to know all 12. There's about six of them. And, and the minute somebody tells you a dream, it'll automatically fit into one of them boxes. Automatically. Now, when you fit it in there, you, now you know, you'll know the direction the dream is trying to talk about. Now, anything else is detail. But the first thing you want to do is break it down and sit and listen, first of all, like in that first dream we talked about, there's a timeline. So write down timeline. Uh, I, 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 after that, then write a little bit of details and it'll all start to revolve and evolve around you. So begin to focus, first of all, on the important element. Don't try to figure the whole dream out. It's too crazy. No, no, no. Look for the main element. Look for the main impression. Look in what direction it's going in and start there and write it down. And you'll be surprised when you start to write it down then how it begins to open up right in front of you. And then when you learn those other dreams that I'll talk about, I'll run them past you probably tonight. But if you learn those, you can fit it in to anybody's dreams. There's only 12 of them. And anyway, uh, uh, so, so we're into this bit about nightmares. Now, not all nightmares are bad represent bad. I know they're horrific when you go through them and they're as real as get out, but not all nightmares are bad. And in essence, not all nightmares are satanic. Not them all. Some of them are, and we'll need to deal with them, but some of them is not. Some of them is actually God trying to talk to you, to bring to your attention some issues that needs to be dealt with. And he has really no other way to get your attention but put you through the horrors. And when there's something gets you, I mean, if it was an early dream, you'll forget. A oh, nightmare? You're not. You're waking up thinking, what was that all about? And, and, and the first, fear, don't let the fear factor get you. Settle down on you. When you begin to analyze it, you begin to see there's a flow in there. And see, is God trying to talk to me? Is, is the enemy lurking about here? Is he trying to warn me? Or is there something I'm doing? He will begin to instruct you. Uh, let me read you this. This is not a lengthy reading, but it's worth reading. In Nebuchadnezzar, this is about Nebuchadnezzar in Daniel chapter 4. We'll read from verse 4. He said, I, Nebuchadnezzar, was at rest in my house, uh, and I was really just lounging about in my palace. He said, I saw a dream which made me afraid. That's a nightmare. Everybody shout, that's a nightmare. I had a dream that made me afraid, and the thoughts upon my bed and the visions of my head, they troubled me, so he couldn't get over this. And he said, he said, therefore I made a decree to bring in all the wise men from Babylon before me that they might make known unto me the interpretation of the dream. And the, in came the magicians and the astrologers and the Chaldeans and the soothsayers. And I told them the dream before me and they, they, they could not make known the interpretation thereof. But at last Daniel... Daniel came in before me, whose name was Belteshazzar, according to the name of my gods. When they brought them into captivity, they give, he didn't call him Daniel anymore. He gave them names after the, the god that they worshipped, Belteshazzar, uh, and whom the spirit of the holy gods was. And before him I told, I told the dream, saying, O Belteshazzar, master of the magicians. In other words, he's not a position. He's over the magicians. He's got that uh, ability to interpret things. He says, because I know the spirit of the holy god is in thee. And he says, no secret troubles thee. Tell me, listen to what he's asked him, tell me the visions of my dream that I have seen. So he, he said to him, he said, I had a dream. Here's number one, I want you to tell me what, what I dreamt. Are you with me? He said, I, he, he didn't say, here's the dream interpret. He said, I had a dream and it's really troubled me. Tell me what the dream was. That's something else. You got to be turned on and moving the prophetic to do that one. He said, I had a dream. Now I want you to tell me what I dreamed. And after that, he said, I want you to give me the interpre interpretation uh, thereof. And he said, and he says, uh, thus was the visions of mine head in the bed. He says, I saw behold a tree in the midst of the earth. It was high and it was good. So God's, God's talking parables again. I saw, so I can see Daniel just sit there saying, uh-huh. Uh -huh. Okay, okay. Sitting, writing a few things down. And he said, okay, I saw a great tree in the midst of the earth. The height of it was so great 
He said, and the tree grew, and it was strong, and it was high, and it reached, it reached up to the heavens. And the sight thereof was at the ends of the earth. It's really, if you'd understand about this, you would understand he's talking about the kingdom that the man was now head of. He said, and the leaves were, f- were fair, and it was fruitful, and as much as all the meat were there, the beast hid under the shadow of it, and the fowls of the heavens dwelt in the bowl, and the, and, and the boughs thereof, and all the flesh fed him. So this, this is just a mighty kingdom. And everything was participating on it. And then he said, I saw, I saw in the vision of my head upon the bed, and behold, the watchers, watchers, same angels. Look at somebody say, the watchers. That same angels watching. The watchers, and the Holy One came down from heaven. And he cried aloud, says, cut down the tree. And anybody can tell you. The nation's going to crumble. That's what he's saying. It's going to be no more. It looks good and it's thriving, but now something's about to come to an end. The angel shouted, cut down the tree, cut off his branches, shake off the leaves, scatter the fruit, let the beasts get away from under it and the fowls from off the branches. Nevertheless, leave the stump of it. So, so we're going to cut down. The nation's going to be no more, but we're going to leave the small remnant of it in there. Leave the stumps in the earth and even with, uh, 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 with brass and iron and, and uh, they capped it. In other words, the tree was cut down the left a bit and they put a metal banner over it that would still keep the tree alive but it wasn't as fruitful as it used to be. And the Bible says then, uh, and, and let, uh, let it be wet in the dew of heaven and let his portion be as the beasts in the grass of the earth. But he says, and let his heart be changed from, and they're talking to Nebuchadnezzar, talking to his man, let his heart be changed from a man's heart, and let a beast's heart be given unto him. Let seven times pass over him. And this is the matter of the decree of the watchers and the demand of the word of the holy ones to and the intent that the living may know that, that the most high God rules the kingdom of men and gives it to whoever who will and sets it up over even of the lowest of men. And he began to talk to them, just telling that dream. And Daniel said, I know exactly what that is. I know exactly what that is. And in this king, this nightmare was actually God warning this king, warning this king, if you don't change your ways, if you don't stop doing what you're doing, you're going to lose the whole show. You're going to, I, I think before I would ever lose the whole show, I would like God to tell me, you're a million miles off, son. And if you don't watch it, you're going to lose every, are, are anybody with me? And this nightmare this nightmare was not from hell, and it wasn't because he ate pizza. I don't know what they had named it. Maybe a camel hump or something <laughs> with yak butter. No, no, no. It wasn't that. This was real. And this was from God, and it freaked the guy out. And when he said, I know what that is, he, says, he said, the Lord wants you to know that you're Mason, and he's caught you on. And if you do not repent, you're going to lose it all. Lose it all for a season. And he even told him about the seven days. You're going to lose it for seven days. And your heart will not be like a man's heart. It'll be like a beast. In other words, you're going to be driven out of your palace. And you're going to have to live like an animal in the fields. for The The Bible says he actually ate grass for the next seven days. But he was cast out of that. because, And a nightmare was warning him. Not all nightmares are from Satan itself. Some of them are, because they're negative, it's, it's, it's God trying to warn you something. So don't throw a, a, a nightmare out and think, man, that's nothing to do with me. I need to, to cast that daylight. Like, no, God could be talking to you. And, and you've got to understand that he could be talking to you about making a change. Now, to change anything is difficult. We are creatures of habit. We don't like change. If God asks you to change your house, change your job, change your nation, it's a fearful thing to do. Nobody wants to do it. And at that point, you might just have, end up with a nightmare. And it's not because you're going into a new job. It's because it's God dealing with you about change. And he does it. There's what we call dark dreams. When the Bible talks about God and the Bible talks about lightnings and talks about all, when it talks about heaven, it's full of different colors and stuff. And colors have a lot to do with your, with your dreams. And I, I don't really want to go into too much of that. But when there's an absence of color and it becomes dark and ominous, you'll find they are the satanic ones. They're the ones that the enemy is in. God's not in them at all. And they are scary. But you've got to remember this, in this, in this, whenever, when, if you're in one of those real deal nightmare situations, you can learn things real fast because normally in that, if you analyze of what happened, how it happened, and, and take the picturesque out, but you can find out the plans of the enemy against you right in there. You can find out what he's trying to do to you walking through a nightmare. You can, if you just analyze it. Now remember this, remember this. When you can spot where the enemy is, 
in a, in a nightmare. You got to remember this, that the devil is a liar. The Bible says he's the father of all lies. So simply as this, whatever you've seen in the nightmare is a lie. Everybody shout, it's a lie. It's a lie. It, it, it's from the kingdom of darkness, and he can't tell you the truth. And what he's trying to do is make you afraid, and there's fearful dreams. But what he's trying to do in that, he's actually exposed his plans to you. And when you've got his plans, you can cancel them. Look at somebody say, I can cancel them. If you see it in a dream, it's from the pit, let me tell you, it doesn't have to come to pass. Now, if you do nothing about it, it will. But when you see it, you have authority, and you can say, that is a lie. That will never come near my door. That will not happen to my children. This will not happen to me. You have the ability to stop it dead in its tracks. And whatever you're seeing, you can pray and command and cause the opposite to be true. So if you see yourself with cancers and see yourself as the enemy trying to make you afraid and you need to rise up and say no weapon formed against me shall prosper. I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. You can say by the stripes of Jesus Christ I am healed. I will not lose this business. I will not lose it. And come against it with a vengeance and be that warrior that God has caused you to be. There is what we call spiritual warfare dreams. And many of them is triggered off. God will show you where the camp of the enemy is. He'll show you the strategies of the enemy. Many of them, because they're so horrific, if you see the battle, if you see the fight, they are scary. When you see demons coming over the hill or you're in a war and you see the, the, the men with the machine guns and you're coming out of the trench. And run. Did anybody ever had a nightmare like this? In a real fight? In a fight? And you're in a real, a real, a, a, a real fight in a nightmare dream? To you, it's real at that moment of time. They're spiritual warfare dreams. And you've got to understand as a believer, you have authority whether you're sleeping or whether you're not. And usually in that point, there's something inside you says, shout the name of Jesus. Have you ever had one of them dreams? And you've shouted the name of Jesus. Do you know what you're actually doing? You're battling demonic forces in the spirit realm, which is called spiritual warfare, and you're actually beating it. And, and let me tell you, so when in your dreams, whenever the enemy backs off, I always, people that tell me in dreams, they say, how does it end? They'll say, well, well, he just walked away or, or, or something like that. I said then, you know, you won. You won. I said, did it kill you? No, it couldn't kill me. No, that's right, it can't kill you. The enemy is always defeated in the dreams because you went, stood it, stood it against. And I said, and I said if, if you can find out how you win, where you win, as long as you win, let me tell you, that will not appear on the face of planet Earth because you've already dealt with it in the spirit realm. Look at somebody say, I need one of them dreams. Maybe, maybe not. <laughs> But they're spiritual dreams. They're absolutely spiritual dreams. And, and there's them dark dreams that are, are, are from the pit of hell. And when them dark dreams get you mind, it's usually, if you just sit down and think about it and run through it in your mind again, you will see where the enemy is. You will see what his plan is. He's exposing his plan. He's laughing at you. He's mocking you. He's letting you know, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do it. Just cut it off. Don't let him do it. Stop him dead in his tracks. No life for you to get you. Fear is not from God. Fear is from the pit of hell itself. And, 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 but God will waken you to your attention. If we give it to you anywhere, you might walk away and not think about it. But he gets you in a nightmare, you'll not forget it in a hurry. There's fearful dreams. There's dreams and they're really fear impact dreams. You wake it up. You ever had a dream where you walk off feeling for it? You ever? No. Does anybody here ever dream at all? Now, the, the fear ones, the fear-driven the fear driven ones are tricky. They're harder to spot because they usually don't come like in black and white and dark and thunder clouds and, and that. No, they, 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 they can come in bright colors too. But what it's trying to tell you in the midst of it is fearful. That you stand and watch, watching your granny dying or, or, you've, or you're lost in a field. Or, and, and you feel it. You feel the whole emotion of it. They're, they're trickier. But they are from the camp of the enemy. And all it's trying to do it's trying to let you talk about that fear and get filled with that fear and feel the emotion of the fear and do nothing about it. Let me tell you something. Usually when that, it's God trying to show you that there's fear hindering your ability to trust God. Somewhere in that, there's, there's a fear aspect now. You're open in some area. And in that area, that fear is now working against you so that you're not trusting God in this one area and it's given the enemy a road through. And you need to analyze it and look at it and say, okay, 
Okay, how did he get me? Where did I feel that impact? And then barricade that up straight away. There's a breach in the wall. There's a hole in your defenses in some one region that you're not trusting God in, and he pinpoints it every time. And he'll tell you, let me tell you something. If fear is not dealt with, if fear is not dealt with, it will grow, and it will become unbelief. They work hand in hand. And the area that you walk hand in hand in fearfulness over and do nothing about it will one day come over to a place of unbelief, and you really don't want to get over into unbelief. Believe you me, that will, that will uh, uh, do all types of things. I think we'll end. Has anybody learned anything this morning? Uh, I, I had more to stuff. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you this one. I know you're thinking, where's the child nightmare as well? We'll see what we can do in seven minutes, okay? We'll see what we can do in seven minutes. There's information dreams. I like these because these keep you up to date with what's going on. I remember when he's, you need to pay attention to them. Let me tell you something. Not every time you dream, it's, it's God doing a thing. But when I dream, and if I remember, if it, you know, there's dreams, you think, I think I dreamt last night. Well, then, if it was God, you'd remember it, okay? So uh, when, when you have dreams, and uh, when you know what I know about it, you, 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 you tune into it. Informative dreams or informing dreams is revealing to you the enemy's plans ahead of time. He's about to ambush you. He's about to get you. I had a dream one time. And, and in the dream, I was sitting in, in a nice cafe. Now, that's my life, isn't it? Everybody knows I sit in nice cafes. I know every cafe in Belfast. I've trampled them all where the good coffee in the bar. That's just me. That's just me. So, that's, so, you know, God's just sitting there. You are, son. At another cafe. So I'm sitting in a cafe. It's on a street. It's on a street cafe. Don't know where it is, but I'm sitting on it drinking coffee. And somebody sat down beside me and leaned over and said, you see those two over there? I said, yes. He said, they're talking about you. I said, really? And he disappeared. So did my coffee cup. And I looked over, but when the two people looked at me, I recognized them. And you hear the word. <laughs> Look at somebody say, this is exciting. <laughs> and you hear the word. And it all stopped that quick. All stopped. That's an information. That's an information thing. It wasn't about several weeks later that somebody came to me, do you know what such and such is saying? I said, never. <laughs> and I said, by any chance, are they talking to you? That one said, that's right. That's right. There's nobody else in well, just them two. I said, really? You never would have known that. <laughs> Except you got dreams. Are you with me? Look at somebody say, I need to know that one. And God will reveal to you the plans and the purposes of hell itself. I remember years ago when I was going to another church, uh, the church we were raised in, and I remember I had a dream. I was, I was even back then, I was always moving prophetic, but I, w I wasn't astute to dreams, but I remember having one. And I remember say, seeing uh, the, the pastor of the church was in it, but I remember it was standing in this big, big, like a cathedral with these pillars. And, and as, as uh, the men in leadership was up here talking, and I was standing like a, a watcher watching on, and all of a sudden, I saw a movement of the, the pillars over the left, left hand side. And I looked over and I saw a man like, you, you know, Kondrakjula. You know him? He knew he wears the black cape or the red thing. You know him? I saw him moving like this from one pillar to another and then moving. So the leadership wasn't aware that he was there, but he was sneaking about the pillars. Pillars always represent the elders or the leadership that holds the whole thing together. And, 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 and I saw this thing, this darkness lurking between the pillars that trying to get the main leaders not to see. So it troubled me. And I went to the pastor and I said, I have a dream. He said, tell me, tell me. And so I told him and the eyes widened. He said, I know what that is. I said, good, because I don't. <laughs> Uh, I, I, he, I said, really, I don't even need to know what it is. He said, I'll just tell you in passing. But he says, it's somebody that's moving between the elders to try to cause strife against the leadership. He said, did you see a face on Count Dracula? I said, only at the last. I said, a funny thing, funny thing. Why would he be in my dreams? He said, Who? And I told him who the face was when it got close. If I could identify just one of the people that went to the church, he just said, 
Thank you. Now, no one that I know now, I now would have known who was causing strife in the church and going amongst sowing discord amongst pillars in the church to try to discredit the leadership. After that, he, it only took about two weeks, and that pastor dealt with some situations, and there was a leaving. There was a leaving of the church hastily of some individuals, absolutely because of a dream. Are you with me? We really we do not need to discard the reality of God speaking to you in a dream. You don't need to run around and tell everybody, oh, I'm dreaming and God's talking to me. No, no, just keep it personal. It's a, it's a, a contact. It's an open door between you and heaven. And God will speak to you on the reality. Just haven't time to go any further. Uh, uh, the next notes down is, is child, children's nightmares. But don't concern us, Patty. Don't concern us. <laughs> Unless, of course, you'd like it to concern you. No, no, I, I, that's what I thought too. Laura, do you want it to concern you? I don't think so. So, so uh, Neil? No, okay. We've got no takers this morning. Anybody wants to, wants to go through it. But children's nightmares. And, and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll open with this one tonight, okay? Children's nightmares. And in and, uh, and passing remark, uh, I get people calling me because their children have nightmares. Kids screaming at the top of the stairs. Sometimes it can trigger off bed wetting and all types of stuff. And it's real to them. And be honest with you, it is real. It is real. And so we'll deal with that tonight. Is that okay? But I want to pray with you this morning. I want to pray with you. I feel like I need to pray with you. Is there any person in this building and your child, your child does have nightmares. Now your child might be 45 next year. <laughs> That's the truth. Isn't that the truth? You know, I, won't, I was nearly asking, how old are you? But you, you know, there's, you, can, you can be a little older and still have children and they're having nightmares. But I'm, I'm messing with you now. But is there any person in this building and your child does have nightmares, recurring nightmares? I know a child and I, and, and, and I prophesied. They're ministry people. And I prophesied over, over that child in particular that it had a prophetic ministry. And one day it'll stand on a platform that child has nightmares, nightmares. But that child's turned on, and sometimes it'll come to his daddy and say, Daddy, I had a dream last night. And the kid, kid couldn't be any more than seven, seven or eight-year-old, you know. He said, I had a dream last night, Daddy. And the daddy will say, What did you dream, son? And he tells him, and his daddy never says about anything to the kid, but he takes what the kid dreams as being a word from heaven. And he has stopped the camp of the animal just through a child. Just through a child. Now, there was a season when the child was having nightmares, and I realized it was the enemy trying to shut him down, make him so afraid that he didn't want to dream anymore. So let me ask you a simple question right now before we get down to pray for people. Is anybody in this room, and your child has nightmares? Is there anybody? It's not a crime. It's not a crime. It is, you know, we got one. Zach, are you right? Ra he's raising his own hand. He's, he's in this morning. See, he's, he got his hand. He couldn't even win on mama putting the hand up. He got his hand up. I know. I'm what he was. He's a good boy. He's a good boy. But it, we just got one person, <coughs> and it's real. We got two. Anybody else? And it's not a crime because your kids are, no, 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 no. Sometimes because, because they've got stuff going on spiritually that, that, uh, that the enemy just tries to put fear in them at an early, an early time. So, so we'll pray, and, and uh, see, you're not putting your hand right up, so you're embarrassed about it, so I won't bring you up, I won't embarrass you. But is there anybody else, and your child has nightmares, and I won't bring you up now, okay? We're not here to embarrass anybody, we're here to deal with stuff. Anybody, just, just two. Friends, years too. Okay. This is real. Uh, over the years, Lauren has had to deal with demonic activity uh, operating against children. Doesn't operate through the parents. It's uh, attacking the kids. Unbelievable stuff. And so it can, because they, they're more vulnerable. Because they're vulnerable. Their little minds are, 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 are vulnerable and more open. And then they watch 
things on TV that gets them. I mean, we all had that when we were young. But some, sometimes it is more uh, subtle, subtly of the enemy. And if it's beginning to affect the child big time, then it needs stopped. It needs to stop. I'm going to pray that. I'm going to pray that. I'm going to pray that right now. Now, if there's anybody, or maybe you're thinking of somebody this morning, they've talked to you and said, my child is having recurring nightmares and stuff. We don't even know to know what they are. If, we, if, if it doesn't clear up, then we do need, and we can specifically, where it's coming, we can target it back. But right now, I just believe in what we talk in, there's an anointing to deal with it, okay? So I, w- I want to I wanna pray. Father, we're just believing. Why don't you take the, take the hand of somebody sitting beside you? Let's pray. You know, the church is a family. This is your family. There, there, there's a sisters uh, or a brothers in this building and, and they've got stuff going on. This is, we need to be here for them. So we are praying right now. And, and uh, somebody's child, Father, somebody's child is being harassed by the enemy. They, they, they have no right, to, that enemy has no right to do it. They're, they're, they're sanctified because mommy or daddy's born again. That house is sanctified. That house is set apart, blood washed and blood bought. But that enemy is over, overtaken. And we're going to cancel his assignment now. We command you to take your darkness and you take your fear and you take your threats and you will leave their mind this very second in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I cancel your nightmarish assignments against them children. They will not be afraid to dream. They will not be afraid to do it. We're going to believe in the name of the Lord Jesus that even you, Lord Jesus, will appear also in that dream and let them see the power of the name of Jesus in their dreams pushing back that enemy and where the enemies tried to destroy to disjoint that person, make them dysfunctional. We're going to believe right now because of the operations of the kingdom of God, they will begin to dream warfare dreams and killing and pushing back the enemy in its entirety so that they'll begin to see that God is a big God. God is a warrior God and he's on their side. We cancel the assignment and we believe for health, health and every aspect of it now in Jesus' name. Amen. Rabbi, Rabbi, in my briefcase is the oil. Grab my oil. Maybe I should just...